Donald Trump, the current frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination, says he wants more private, for-profit prisons in the U.S. He made the comment at an MSNBC town hall March 30th. With prisons, no, I, think I do think we can do a lot of privatizations and private prisons. It seems to work a lot better. With this statement, Trump has proven once again that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or he likes the fact that greedy corporations are making billions of dollars locking people up while violating their basic human rights and wants more of it. Currently, the $5 billion private prison industry houses about 6% of state prisoners and 16% of federal prisoners, according to the ACLU. Unlike their public counterparts, private prisons are accountable to investors and hedge funds, not just taxpayers, making profit, not rehabilitation, the number one goal. After lining the pockets of shareholders, revenues are used to create more beds and aggressively lobby state and federal governments to deliver more prisoners to fill them. In fact, Government contracts granted to private prisons often require minimum occupancy rates between 80 and 100 percent. Moreover, a 2015 study found that inmates in private prisons are likely to serve as many as two to three months more behind bars than inmates in public prisons. Because of the profit motive, private prisons are also typically more violent, filthy, and understaffed. In fact, in a 2013 lawsuit, the ACLU called one private prison an extremely dangerous facility operating in a perpetual state of crisis, where prisoners live in barbaric and horrific conditions, and their basic human rights are violated daily. One of the main arguments made in favor of private prisons is the alleged monetary savings, which Trump certainly hopes to take advantage of. However, data from states like Arizona show that private prisons actually cost about $1,600 more per inmate every year, according to the Arizona Department of Corrections. But even before mentioning private prisons at the MSNBC town hall, Trump also had some words to say about cannabis. Despite an earlier proclamation that states should be able to choose whether or not to legalize the plant, Trump seemed to go back to the position he had earlier in the campaign, saying he thinks he's basically pro-medical cannabis, but has heard some very negative reports coming from Colorado about recreational weed. Of course, Trump doesn't give a single example of a so-called negative report. I think that as far as drug legalization, we talk about marijuana and uh, in terms of medical, I think I am basically for that. I've heard some wonderful things in terms of medical. Uh, I'm watching Colorado very carefully, see what's happening out there. I'm getting some very negative reports. I'm getting some okay reports, but I'm getting some very negative reports coming out of Colorado as to what's happening. So we'll see what happens. And I think a lot of people are really looking at Colorado. Donald Trump and the rest of the Republican presidential lineup are no friends to cannabis legalization and criminal justice reform advocates. The only candidate who appears willing to bring about real meaningful change in this area and others is Bernie Sanders. Unlike Trump, Sanders wants to end mass incarceration, abolish private for-profit prisons, end the federal prohibition of cannabis, demilitarize police forces, and eliminate mandatory minimum sentences, among other priorities. For those hoping for an end to cannabis prohibition and mass incarceration, the choice is clear. 